Hey everybody, welcome back to another Gardener's Journey um, Homestead. I'm Barbara and today I'm going to just take you around a day in the life on the farm, on the homestead, homestead and what we're doing today. So it's a Sunday, the weather is about 60 degrees, so it's nice and we're trying to get as much done as we can before it gets dark. So today on the list, we're moving wood from um, the, that was delivered um, a couple of days ago. We're moving it to the back onto the log rack. Um, I'm moving some things into the root cellar, yay. And then also we're gonna do some stuff in the greenhouse. So come on, let's go. walk around this way you can see that he has the tractor going and that's how we're moving the wood there's hubby putting some air in the tires he has the wood stacked up on the tractor he'll just move it around you can see all the wood that we have we'll need it because it's going to be cold it was 29 degrees last night. So one of the things obviously with living um, in the country, we do have a wood burning stove that we had um, put in last year. And so that's one of the ways that we're trying to be a little bit more sustainable and to be more efficient with um, our coins, right? So uh, we have a wood burning stove that we're burning wood um, to heat the house. It doesn't heat the whole house, but it does um, a pretty good job. Um, and so definitely that's what we'll be using um this winter um as well and so we're excited about that so um inside the root cellar you can see um what we've done since the last video you can see that we put pallets down and then these are all my buckets of bulk items that i have packed and mylar bags. I'll have to do a video um, about mylar bag storage, um, but this, that's a long-term storage option. So if you're not familiar with mylar bags, I will do a video on that. Just put a comment down below if you would like to see that. Um, but then as you move kind of around the root cellar, you'll see that we have put in one shelf, two shelves so far. That's the shop back. We're just getting the dust up. So we're preparing for moving. So you can see that I've brought my sweet potatoes out here and my garlic. Um, so let me show you the temperature in the root cellar, which is the benefit of a root cellar. You can see that it's 58 degrees um, in here. So the root cellar keeps the temperature, hopefully of the earth, which is about 55 degrees because this is underground, um, about nine feet. It doesn't look like it when I walk in, but we dug the hill inside of um, the ground. So um, the plan today, is to put more shelving up and to actually start bringing my cannon jars out here. Now, on the last video, I told you that we still needed um, one more thing done with the root cellar, which is the protective liner. We put the concrete um, on. So the next and last step is the concrete liner. That's supposed to be happening this week. And then we'll move dirt back on top of it. That'll also happen, um, hopefully, maybe not this week, but next week. But the, the root cellar is still able to be moved in, which I didn't know until my husband told me, even without the protective liner, because the temperature is being contained um, in here, even with just the concrete and with the temperatures dropping, and um, it's ready for moving. So the protective liner will give us extra protection when it rains so that it doesn't get wet in here. And then of course, when we dump the dirt back on top of it, then it's gonna help insulate it even more and help it to maintain the temperature. But I've been monitoring the temperature all week long and it's been ranging. 58 is the lowest I've seen. And that's probably because it was so cold last night. Um, so right now outside, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. And it's about 60 degrees. Um, and again, you can see that it's keeping the temperature even without the dirt on top of it because of the insulation and just kind of um, the concrete around it. 
but the temperature hasn't gone any higher than 62, even when it's been like 70 degrees outside. So it's maintaining and holding temperature well. So I'm excited to kind of move some stuff in here today and to start getting it set up. It will be a process, but I'm so excited because I've been waiting over a year for this. So I'll take you guys along and let you see as we make progress. Okay, so let me show you what I've done. So this is all the stuff I've canned um, that was in my house, in my cabinets. And you can see, y'all, it didn't fill up a whole shelf. I thought I was getting down on my cannon. This is, looks like I have not done anything. Oh my goodness. But I have done something. So you can see how deep it is, meaning, you know, there's like five on each row. So you can see that. So that's probably, I don't know, 50 something jars out here that I have canned, but I got plenty, 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 plenty of space. You can see the whole bottom shelf is empty. That whole shelf is empty. And I have like three or four more of these shelves to go in here. So trust me, between now and this time next year, by God's grace, it will be way more full than it is now. But let me show you some of the stuff that I have canned this year. So I have apple butter, I have some mango jam, applesauce, apple juice, um, apples, like for like apple pie, or if you want to put it in your oatmeal, pickle relish, jalapeno salsa. I have peaches, more peaches, peach jam. That's cranberry sauce that I've canned. There's some red beans, there's some lentils, and then there is the famous jalapeno salt. Um, I did a video on that. So, and then I put my sweet potatoes and the remainder of my sweet potatoes and the remainder of my garlic um, up there. So, and then that's just another thing that I can set up. That's some strawberry jelly. And then down here are just the empty boxes. So you can see as I kind of back away that I got plenty of room and y'all, this whole wall will be filled eventually with these shelves. But this is where we are right now. Um, I'm grateful for the space. I'm grateful to see what I have because y'all, there's some stuff that um, I haven't used because I couldn't see it. It was so high up in my cabinets that only my husband could reach. So I'm glad to know what I have. This, now I can see it. I know what I don't need more of. I know what I need to, to buy, um, excuse me, or what I need to can and to preserve. So I know that um, in the upcoming months, I'm gonna be preserving and canning some beans. I'm gonna do black beans because we eat those a lot for like taco night. Um, I'll be doing like, you know, pinto beans, lentils, things like that. And I'll walk you through through that. I'll walk it through and you guys can follow along with me as I do it so you can see. And um, I promise you this will be way more full this time next year by God's grace than it is now. But I'm grateful for what um, I have been able to do. But I'm so grateful to actually be in the root cellar now to see what I have, right? Um, because a lot of stuff was so high up in my cabinets that only my husband can reach. And then you forget, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. So in looking through this, I see I have um, quite a bit of applesauce, quite a bit of apple butter that I canned um, that we haven't used yet. So it's just now apple season now. So, um, okay, we'll go back outside. It's just now apple season now. So um, now I can decide whether or not I want to get more apples, right? I can decide how many more apples do I want to get because how much more do I need to can? How much is my family going to eat? So being able to know and see it um, is going to make a huge difference because again, it's apple season. I was about to go all in and buy tons of apples, but I don't know that I need a ton because I still have applesauce and apple butter that we have not used. Okay. So um, one of the other things I wanted to say is if you did not see my root cellar video before, I'll link it up above so that way you can see the progress, um, all about the root cellar and why we decided to have a root cellar. But that's just another um, thing that we got done today. So, so far y'all today, we've done the wood and got it all from the front of the house to the back of the house on the log racks. Uh, we have moved everything that we have into the root cellar. All of my canning jars are in there. All of my buckets for my long-term storage and grains and things that I pre um, have preserved in mylar bags are in there. So the only thing that's left to go in the root cellar is as I can more. And then I do have um, 
a box full of stuff <laughs> that I need to store um, that I've bought that's still in bags that I need to store and put in mylar bags. And so I will do a video on that and I'll use that to show you guys how I do it and how easy it is. Um, again, so one of the things let me also talk about is you may be thinking, man, why is she doing all this? Like, why well, have all that stuff? So there's a couple of reasons. One, living in the country is much different than living in um, the city, right? So you don't have as much access to things, meaning like right there. So when I lived in the city, like I said, Publix was five minutes from my house. So the Publix that I go to now is like, you know, the closest one is 30 minutes. I can get to one in 30 minutes. Um, so anywhere between 30 and 50 minutes, I can get to Publix. I can get to Target. I can get to Costco, Sam's, places like that, right? But 50 minutes is much different than five minutes. So that's one reason why I prepare in bulk. Number two, with um, everything that happened right before the pandemic, when the stores were, sh were when the stores and shelves were bare, a lot of people panicked, and um, a lot of people, you know, including me, I wouldn't say panicked, but I did not like the fact that I would um, go in the store and I could not get what I needed. Right? I didn't like the fact being. Um, subject to whatever they had on their shelves. I didn't like the fact that if I wanted beans, I couldn't get beans. I didn't like that, right? And so, again, that's one of the reasons why we are trying to grow our own food, preserve our own food, to have a level of sustainability and not be dependent on supply chain. So, y'all, that was like, what, two years ago now when the pandemic first started in 2000? No, yeah, 2020, so a year and a half ago. Well, now in 2021, as we start to round the corner and to do 2022 what are we having again y'all supply chain issues right you go into the store and the shelves are empty right i have not been in a store in the last six months where i go on every um shelf and it's full right there's always something on my list that they don't have multiple things on the list that they don't have and you'll get to the counter and they'll say hey did you find everything you need i'm like no not really i didn't <laughs> or whatever and so that is another reason. So again, um, you may ask, am I a prepper? Nope, I'm not a prepper. Not at all. I don't consider myself that I am doing what I think is best for my family. And then also the third reason is that I'm a Christian and I do believe that a time is coming that we need to be prepared because the Bible says so, right? The Bible says so. And so that's another reason why I am preparing and um, making sure that we're growing our own food, that we have things um, preserved, right? Um, so I could go on and on and on. There's many other reasons as well, but those are the main reasons. So am I a prepper? Not, I mean, not by the traditional um, definition, no. But do I want to be prepared and not depend on the stores and supply chain? Absolutely. Do I want to grow my own food and know what I'm eating? Absolutely. Do I want to preserve my food when I have an abundance and not throw it away? Absolutely. So that is what we are all um, about. And so it is a journey. I'm learning as I go, um, reading, researching, praying, asking the Lord for guidance. Um, and let me just say this, that none of this replaces um, my dependence on Christ, right? So if you haven't watched my channel, you're just joining in. I am a Christian. I probably haven't, you know, talked about it a lot just because I just started the channel. But as we continue to go, you will see that I am a Christian. And I do believe that um, Christ will take care of us. But I also do believe that, that we have a work to do, right? That we have a work to do. So um, that's kind of I won't keep going on and on about that, but this is what I would encourage you, whether you live in the city, in the country, in an apartment, in a condo, in a town hub house, if you're renting a room for somebody, this is what I'm asking you to do is to be aware of what you can do and do that, right? No matter where you sit, no matter where you are, do something to take care of you and your family's needs. So if you can grow something, grow something. Put a hole in the ground and put something in it and grow it. Get you a vertical garden. I showed you the green stalk. I'll link that video up here again. Do something to um, grow and to sustain your family. Start making smarter choices, right? 
to make sure that you are taken care of. So start somewhere, do something. Don't wait until you have land. Don't wait until you move. Don't wait, do something wherever you are right now. So, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just gotta be done, right? It just has to be done. So anyway, um, we got one more thing to try to accomplish today, which is um, some stuff in the greenhouse. And um, let's see, we probably got a couple more hours before it gets dark. So I'll take you guys along with us if we're able to get um, that done. We're going to try to lay more paper down um, as we finish the greenhouse project. Okay, so I'll take you along with us on the next one. Hey, y'all, um, as you can probably see behind me, the sun is about to set. So it's getting dark. We didn't make it to the greenhouse to get um the project items we had to get done in the greenhouse we just didn't make it today you know what sometimes it's like that i'm tired <laughs> it has been quite the day so um the parts that i didn't show you is that we um did more wood um for my husband went to go help his mom and put wood on her log rack um as well him and lucas my son went and did that so the parts that i needed in the greenhouse he was going to help me with but he hasn't made it back in time before it gets dark and the temperature is dropping um also um i feel content for um another video that i can't wait to show you guys so i i did that in between time so that'll drop um a few days after this one and can't wait to um to show you that one so um i have been busy um, I'm still in the midst of doing the content for the other video. Um, so I can't can't wait for you to see it. Um, but y'all, I'm tired. I drove down here to the greenhouse so that I can close it up for the night. It's going to be 29 um, degrees again um, tonight. So I'm coming down here to um, let the sides down, close it up so all the plant babies um, can be okay. So um that's what we're doing thank you guys so much for joining um us today just seeing a typical day uh, especially a typical sunday and um the life on our homestead just getting projects done and trying to take advantage of weather and daylight that is the name of the game especially during the fall season remember that gardening is a journey let's grow together i'll see you next time